Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Robert Whitkey of Racine is a Republican seeking re-election in the 62nd Assembly District. Uh, Representative, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Welcome back. Not a problem. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, time. Let's go to the debate over policing reform because you, Southeast Wisconsin, you had to watch those Kenosha incidents pretty, pretty darn closely. So we've got the governor's nine bills. The speaker's going to form a, a task force. The Professional Police Association has a plan. Senator Wangard, your senator, has got a few bills. What policing reforms could you support, do you think, are needed? Well, uh, number one, uh, my primary focus is the rule of law. I think people that saw what happened in Kenosha believe one thing. We want to be safe in our community. Uh, we want to feel safe at home. Uh, we don't want our businesses destroyed um, in the name of change. So uh, I believe that uh, uh, the things that we were that we're going to uh, have to take a look at. Uh, I I myself uh, have uh, sat down with uh, either contacted or met with uh, the law enforcement agencies that serve my district. Uh, I, I've taken uh, three ride-alongs uh, each shift with the Racine County Sheriff. Uh, I think you need to get a really good understanding of what we ask these officers to do. Uh, I have, uh, I gained nothing but uh, uh, can't underscore my respect for the brave men and women that uh, come out every day, every shift, every night, no matter how the world changes to keep us safe in our neighborhoods. And uh, it was really enlightening to me uh, how fast situations change uh, what what we have to prepare them to do, uh, the challenges that they they meet uh, at every corner, and so um, I'm fortunate here in Racine County uh, to have a, a very good uh, sheriff's department that uh, sat down, showed me their uh, leading edge body camera um, uh, devices that they wear, uh, where for example, when an officer pulls the taser or a weapon everyone in, in potentially a 30 foot radius, all of their body cameras go off without fail. Um, and, and he emphasizes the fact is that how that has protected uh, our citizens here, as well as the officers that are enforcing the law. The, uh, the other part um, that we talked about was some of the uh, leading edge things that he would like to do as far as training goes. I think one thing that gets lost in the discussion is that our law enforcement agencies want to keep the best. They want to keep the brightest. They want trust in our communities, just as our citizens want to feel safe in their homes and have the same trust that those that enforce the law are there to do just that. And so I have read through the bills that, uh, that the governor offered. Uh, I have looked at uh, um, some, it's, I think you have to go back and take a look at just how we're set up um, to uh, for law enforcement um, uh, itself. There's a law enforcement standards board in the statutes. Um, there are uh, a number. There are, there was a bill introduced in 2017 that had support of the DOJ, that had support of the standards board, that had support of other law enforcement agencies uh, that would do things in one of the bills that's been offered. Uh, as far as uh, employment records, recruiting, et cetera. So there have been things that have already been put out there. Um, I don't believe this is an easy list, lift of just putting laws in place and checking the box. Um, I believe that uh, this is going to take um, a hands-on approach uh, to provide meaningful change for the citizens of Wisconsin. Okay. New subject. Um, if the pandemic causes us to be short in general fund tax collections, maybe a billion dollars. Um, your approach, uh, cut spending, or should we look at uh, increasing taxes and fees? 
So I'm a fiscal conservative. So my first, uh, the first words out of my mouth are going to be cut expenses. And I'm, a, I'm also going to say that uh, I don't think you're going to have a choice uh, because if you're watching what's happening in our community with our businesses and so on, uh, we have been able to survive um, through our revenue collections uh, with the prudent budgeting we've done in the past, but there's no expectation that, that the collection rate that we see now may stay at its current pace. And so as, the, as our, our revenue decreases, our ability to offer programs is going to decrease. There are going to be some very serious challenges in putting a budget together um, that continues to keep our state moving forward. And that not only is gonna affect the state, but as you know, all the services that the state provides, um, those go down to our local governments, our citizens, et cetera. And so there will be some huge challenges coming for, for the next budget, which will be, uh, I believe the 2021, 20, um, 2023. Yeah, it's budget. gonna end, it, yeah, the 21, the fiscal 21 will end on June 30. Um, while right. we're talking about the pandemic, the governor's order statewide masks edict um, end September 28th. Should that uh, uh, edict be continued? I would say no. And, and here's my reasoning. Um, I don't believe in a one size fits all um, state mandate out of, out of any agency, out of any part of the, uh, um, any, any branch of the government. Uh, I believe that uh, the businesses I represent, the people I represent um, can, can make the, the, use their, their own personal uh, responsibility, the choices they make to keep um, people safe to, uh, to protect our most vulnerable. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll go to an example I had. I had, uh, in August, I dropped off my son at UW-Eau Claire. And because I'm on the colleges and universities um, committee right now, I, I, I get to know several of the chancellors. I happen to be an alumni there, so that always is a little bit of a benefit. But I sat down with uh, Chancellor Jim Schmidt um, for about a half an hour. And he talked about um, what he is doing on his campus Okay, now his overall goal was to keep open the entire year, not just for two weeks, not for any, and to listen to who he consulted with, health officials, his own staff, buildings and grounds, um, business community. He had the uh, bar owners and other entertainment facilities in to talk with them about how they could structure things not to have two weeks of really good business, but the entire year. They have protocols in place so that they can, they can minimize um, infection and so on. And so as, as you step back and look how someone at a localized level that's running a specific area of our um, university system, I think that's more the model that works for all of us and keeps us all safe. Okay. Um, Senator Kappinga last week dropped a bill that says if a uh, organization or a business complies with uh, COVID protocols to protect its patients, customers, or uh, employees, they could not be sued over COVID. Do we need that state law? Yes, and uh, I, I am happy uh, to have submitted my name as a co-sponsor with that bill. Okay. It's a bill that a lot of not, not-for-profits, um, a lot of other uh, groups are looking for uh, so that they can put on the events and so on that they need. And uh, our business community uh, has made it very clear um, that to, to get our economy started and in the right direction, um, that we've got to uh, protect our business owners and so on from any, uh, any uh, frivolous lawsuits in that direction. We've seen the role that hospitals, Wisconsin and nationally, have played in treating COVID-19 patients. If you're reelected voting on the next state budget, do hospitals deserve an even greater financial priority than they may have gotten in the current budget? Uh, well, I will tell you that uh, even in my first term, um, I, I sat down with the hospital association. They, they do get um, a high priority um, based on, on, on how, how, how the reimbursement rates and so on are structured. It's a, it's a very complex and um, a very, what I would call a very high, um, very tricky uh, venue to go down uh, because of, and, and I'm on uh, with our healthcare providers probably uh, once a month or so on. 
and I know they are um, expending uh, great sums uh, to be able to, to deal with the issues that we have with the health emergency, as well as to get back up and running on other um, health care that our communities need. So I think the priority has always been high. Will it be a little higher? Um, my, my opinion will be probably so. Okay. As the states around Wisconsin legalize medical and recreational marijuana, what's, what's your position? Um, my position is more of a, uh, first of all, um, uh, I, I go with following federal law, um, so it's not legal federally. Uh, so I don't support uh, uh, different laws that would usurp our federal government. Uh, should we take consideration on the med medical marijuana side? Um, that's probably a reasonable, reasonable approach right now on the recreational side, no. And I would say that one of the things that people that uh, advocate for legalizing marijuana should go and take a look at some of the recent papers written as to the impact that um, has gone on in the state of Colorado. Uh, so, as an example, uh, we were just, uh, I was discussing this with some others uh, the other day, and everyone says, well, the, all the money that Colorado's collecting is going to the schools. Well, not, not really if you take a look at the facts, because their health care issues have, uh, that the state has to supply, have started to increase significantly, and so now they're on the hook for that, and they're trying to work through that issue. So I think um, if, if if you're going to do something, um, you've got to follow uh, federal law, and then we've got to do something um, that I believe uh, would be uh, done in a way that would be in the best interest of the, the, the state of Wisconsin. Reapportionment. The uh, Constitution says the party in power will draw the next congressional legislative lines. The governor's got a People's Maps Commission recommendation. Uh, where are you on the uh, who should draw the next set of lines? Um, my, my point is follow the Constitution. It's been done as far back as, I, what I would tell people is go, go take a look at the history. Um, everyone's gonna have a chance to draw maps. Uh, the Assembly, the Senate, the Governor will, what source you use, how, how you draw that is gonna be up to each faction. Uh, once that comes together, um, all three parts of the government are gonna to have to come together to um, basically put together uh, what uh, fair maps for the, the citizens of Wisconsin. Uh, and what'll end up happening is if you look in history, the courts have made the final determination probably as long as I've been alive. Uh, and so just take a look at the history, follow the constitution, and I believe that uh, the process will serve out properly for the, the citizens of Wisconsin. Given your experience on the Racine School Board, let me ask you about caps, uh, property tax caps and limits. They've been around mm -hmm. more than 20 years. When you're a school board mm -hmm. member, you had to live under them. If you're voting on the next state mm -hmm. budget, do we keep those caps and limits on property tax levies in place? I, I say yes. Uh, they have served a purpose um, to try to uh, work through uh, the balance between state and, and local spending. What what people what the number of people uh, don't realize is that local governmental units can go out to a referendum, mm -hmm. which the process was designed that way so voters would get a chance to weigh in on whether they want to increase the levy outside the, the way the uh, the limits um, are set up now or not. Okay. On the other hand. Uh, I have two communities um, that I represent uh, in my district, Raymond and uh, Wind Lake. Both are served by volunteer fire departments. The volunteer, um, the, the volunteer members um, are starting to go down, which would mean that they would have to take a look at um, putting together something other than a volunteer department. So. Looking at that, you're going to have to deal with issues that say there are going to be some changes in service, basic services that are offered to our residents. And so how do we work with that even in the cap? Because if, if they're not going to see the type of, of uh, if they don't believe they can pass a referendum for that, if they don't uh, have the kind of development that allows them to raise their limit for something like fire service and a number of other services, you may have to consider um, looking at how we structure those limits 
to make some modifications to it that, that, that will allow for that. As far as my biggest thing has been, I think local residents really have to tune into what are your local governments, what are your local school districts spending their money on. Locals, uh, cities, towns, villages, do they need alternative revenue, revenue sources to uh, be not so reliant on the property taxes? Remember that Representative Goyke has a plan, pass a referendum, Milwaukee could levy a half cent sales tax. Time to give some of these local governments alternative revenue sources? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, being uh, uh, vice chair of the Ways and Means Committee, uh, I was actually in on that hearing, uh, which would uh, look at alternate sources. And I, I will say this, I'm, I'm a proponent of, of bringing a better tax structure. Uh, my, my background is in finance and accounting uh, and in tax. We need a better tax structure in this state moving forward. We do need to, to come off the reliance on the property tax. We've looked at structures in other states. Uh, the listening to what uh, the city of Milwaukee wanted and so on, uh, I think it's something that we have to consider, but I'm not so sure that uh, uh, there's probably different ways to, to, to look at that. But I think that overall, the goal has to be to, to bring the tax burden on our citizens down, property tax, as well as income sales tax, et cetera. Last year, the governor recommended raising the gas tax. 30.9 cents per gallon hasn't been raised in 10 or 12 years to stabilize highway and bridge funding. Any way you could vote to raise a gas tax? Uh, Another discussion that we that we've had in our first term in the Ways and Means Committee, which is how how do you long, the real answer is how do you look long term out for a sustain sustainable funding for t- transportation upgrades, because as cars get more efficient, as alternate fuel um, automobiles come up, as the transportation industry changes, a reliance on the gas tax probably is not going to do it. So you have to think out what should be our long-term strategy and back up all the way through. And as always, I'm not a big uh, advocate for uh, increasing tax. Okay, Um, uh, drawing again on your experience on the school board, when a school board or local government wants to uh, approve a major public works project, should they have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? Well, I have a great respect for um, I represent a number of Wisconsin businesses in my district. I have a great respect for <clears throat> their ability to competitively bid on things, but no, I'm not necessarily in favor of just um, mandating at the state level that we have only Wisconsin businesses um, com- uh, be given those contracts. I think competitive uh, bidding is out there for a reason. Uh, it uh, protects the taxpayer. And I work with a number of companies um, <clears throat> that provide, uh, let's say, building for our school districts across Wisconsin, and they do uh, a wonderful job uh, through com- the competitive bidding, bidding process. Okay, um, just two more questions. First, Bill, if you're reelected, you're gonna introduce next session. What is, what's it gonna be? Um, the first one is the yep. one that's sitting in the, it, the one that's sitting in the Senate right now that calls for um, a number of, uh, we call it the taxpayer uh, enhancement bill. It's a comprehensive tax package that we worked probably three to five months on with the Department of Revenue, all the other stakeholders. Um, Senator Markline was our uh, co-sponsor in the Senate. Uh, we need to get that in place because it conforms uh, many of our laws um, to the benefit of our taxpayers to federal law. And it does a number of things to help the uh, DUR and some of their processes uh, become more efficient. So that would be first out of the gate. Uh, we're looking at uh, some school accountability, uh, things that were introduced last uh, time that we need to push forward now. Uh, and then I've got another bill uh, that uh, basically revises some of the principles that came from my predecessor, uh, Representative Weatherston, uh, which made some modifications to the marriage process to take a little bit more of the government out and make it easier for people to get married across the state of Wisconsin. Finally, differences between you and your opponent on November 3. Well, um, I think one of the things that was the last question that you just gave me, and that is um, ready to um, move forward uh, as we are starting to collect other uh, 
things that benefit our constituents here uh, and, and work through uh, law. Uh, the other thing is that one of the things in my first term that uh, really was impressive to me was that I found that a number of different um, really good pieces of legislation came from uh, representatives' personal experience. Uh, I'll represent the hope agenda that Representative Nigren championed, all, all done through his own personal experience. Um, my personal experiences are those that I think are the majority of our um, uh, constituents that I have here in the district. Uh, I've, I've got kids in college right now. Um, I, I've got to uh, maintain a job. Uh, I work with our business community here. I'm pro-business, uh, fiscal conservative. Uh, so I've got a budget that I've got to meet at home. And I think that, that really helps you uh, work through really good legislation that helps your, your constituents. And uh, I just, the, the other thing is, is that I, I look to uh, become a stronger voice for them. Uh, as you gain credibility uh, with your colleagues uh, and as you uh, are able to uh, uh, work through other issues with them, uh, there's opportunities to become a stronger voice. And I think I can provide that for the, the, the constituents in the 62nd district. State Representative Robert Whitkey of Racine is a Republican seeking re-election in the 62nd Assembly District. Congress, or Representative, I almost said Congressman, uh, Representative, thanks for your time. <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. I really you appreciate bet. it. Have a good day. Thank you. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.